These are stethoscopes that I've carried with me and used in the field over the last two to three years that I've worked on the ambulance. This is the stethoscope that was given to me when I was in EMT school. This stethoscope was handed to me by my instructor and he handed the same stethoscope to the rest of the students in class. Uh, this is the bare bones entry level stethoscope. I would not recommend using this for diagnosing patients. I would not recommend using this in the field. Let me show you why. These earpieces are hard plastic and this spring is quite strong. And what that does is because there's no rubber here, there's nothing soft, as it squeezes inwards, it causes a lot of pressure and a lot of pain. Past that, this dual lumen design here is really noisy. And what I mean by that is that they'll rub up against each other ever so slightly and you'll get friction when you're trying to listen to sound. And what that does is it, it causes background noise and it makes it harder to hear what you're trying to listen to. Past that, these, there's about four or five screw on or off locations here. So this can be disassembled in a litany of different ways. And what that does is the likelihood that you're gonna pick this up and you're gonna have, hold on. You're gonna have wobble is quite, is quite good. I keep my stuff cranked down real tight, but not everybody does. And if you're picking up one of these off of an ambulance or off of some sort of entry level medical kit, it doesn't, it doesn't work uh, half the time. And, and that's, that's something that's really, really bothered me. Um, and, and why I say it doesn't work is because as these things are used, the, the front here will dent and it will crack and it will degrade. And, and what that will do to the stethoscope is now you're not getting the kind of reverberation on the plate that you are with a normal diaphragm here. It's, it's hollowed in and you're not gonna be able to get the same sound that you need. So, so I wouldn't recommend these for a fast paced environment. I wouldn't recommend these for an ambulance or an ER. Maybe if you're in a clinical setting and you're taking very few patients and you don't have any sort of rush and you don't have much background noise, but, but, but not for my job and not for what I do. Now this, this is a Littman lightweight. This is the stethoscope you'll see on the majority, majority of nurses in an ER. And, and that's because it's simple, it's cheap, and it's lightweight. Uh, it's called lightweight. They use a they use a thinner diameter of tubing. They use a a plastic for the bell instead of a steel. And and what that does is it makes this incredibly light, incredibly cheap. It's only about fifty dollars, but it still carries the same kind of clout that you'd get from the Lippman name. Now the pediatric side doesn't have a diaphragm on it, and the adult side is almost tear shaped and enlarged but you get great sound out of this stethoscope. It has these very soft, supple, oversized um, tips here for your ears. So it doesn't create those kind of hot spots that a, hot, that a hard plastic with a strong spring would. Now this, the spring here is strong, but it's, it's, it's still soft enough that it's not, it's not attacking your ears. You know, it's just, it's just sitting in there and firmly lodging itself uh, where, where it needs to be. And that's, this is, a, I've used this for a year and I've never had any trouble with it. But recently I've wondered, I have the cheapest Litman, right? What's the difference in a $50 Litman and a $300 Litman? And I've been using this now for about four months in the field on a 911 ambulance. And I can tell you it's significant. So what this stethoscope does is it, it's based off of the Lippmann Cardiology 4. So all of this up to here, and then all of this downstream is just a Lippmann Cardiology, right? This is what's different. They place this in line. There's no, no wiring. There's no speakers down here. There's no microphone here. It's all here. So this is rechargeable uh, using USB. And then it is, that's your on and off button right there. Great tactile feedback. That blinking shows that it's trying to connect with my phone. And it's trying to connect with my phone because if it can, it will attempt to play the sound that it's hearing through the speakers of your phone or through the aux port of your phone or through any AirPods or, or Bluetooth headphones that you have. 
uh, and it will attempt to do that so that you can hear with those instead of your ears. Now it will amplify the sound and play it downstream. Uh, let, me, let me actually pause and tell you what this does. So when it's on, as it's listening, it's applying noise canceling technology. So you're not hearing road noise. You're not hearing your sirens. You're not hearing uh, the car behind you honking its horn. You're not hearing somebody having a conversation next to you. And if you're actually still rolling on the stretcher and you're not in the ambulance, you're not hearing those wheels squeak. You are absolutely just hearing those lung sounds or those heart sounds. And it's amazing that Littman was able to integrate this kind of technology. Um, you have volume up and volume down button right here. And if you press this when it's linked to your phone, it will save a 15 second audio clip of whatever you're hearing. So if you believe you're hearing abnormal heart or lung sounds, you can press that and you'll actually be able to save that and play it later for a nurse or a physician. And, and, and I, feel, I believe that's a really valuable tool to be able to actually save those sounds. I've also been able to save my cat's heart sounds. I've been able to save my own, my fiance's, and I think it's really cool to be able to play that sound for somebody else. And I think it's really useful in a pre-hospital environment. So, so I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, what, I, what I use to be able to get better sound is these. So Walker, makes these shooting headphones. Now they can take in sound and play them through speakers on the inside. And because of that, they have an aux port so that you can connect a radio or you can connect uh, music or something like that. And what I'll do is I'll plug that in and then I'll take this and I'll connect it to my cell phone. And anything, my stethoscope here will be played through this because they're shooting headphones and they're meant for shotguns, rifles, things like that. They completely isolate you from outside noise. So unlike these, where they're just little little earbuds going in, this covers up your whole ear and it completely, it completely isolates any outside sound. And then this won't allow you to pick up any sound that isn't that isn't you know being provided by the heart or lungs of your patient. So you're getting very accurate, precise sound in, in environments that may be very, very loud. And this allows me to be able to hear in, in really chaotic environments. And this is something I'd recommend to people in my position. Now, I understand that it's, it's prohibitively expensive. I understand that $300 for a stethoscope isn't something that everybody's willing to pay. But if you're in a position where you can't afford this, I would tell you to go ahead and buy it. Uh, it's something that has improved my ability to be able to diagnose wheezing, strider, um, abnormal heart sounds and, 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 and be able to understand what is normal and what isn't. And, and to be able to have that, that kind of amplified sound and be able to record it and play it back for somebody later, it's, it's important for education, it's important for diagnosis, and it's, it's something that you should definitely play around with and see, it, and see if it's what you like. Um, but there is a difference. And if you're working with something like this, uh, I, would, I would definitely tell you to go ahead and upgrade your kit to, to this here, because this, this makes the biggest difference in my physical initial assessment um, out, of, out of any of the equipment that I've used so far. So, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, put those down below and, uh, and I'd be happy to answer them. If you felt like this was useful in showing uh, some of the diagnostic equipment that I carry, uh, please, please drop a like or press subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you.